All right, from bus to baseball, uh, Steve Buchanan, <coughs> DraftKings contributor, Red Wires, Eric Halterman. Uh, good to have you guys here today. Good morning. Uh, Bukes. <laughs> Uh, Bukes, what'd you think about uh, the Yankees yesterday? The intentional walk of Cabrera to keep him at 2,999 hits for his career. You know what? They're just trying to do anything they can to stay in the news because, you know, a storm is coming, as Catwoman said to Batman oh. in, in a few movies ago. So they're just trying to do anything they can to cover up that storm. Wait, is that a spoiler alert for this new one that just came out? Oh, you'll have to wait and find out. <laughs> uh, Halterman, uh, how'd you feel about that move? A little, little salty there by the Yankees? I mean, if this was Cabrera's last ever at bat, I'd, I'd be a lot more worried. I think he's going to have a few more chances to get to 3,000. Yeah. I think we're probably going to forget about it in a week or so. So I think if they're managing to win games, that's probably fine. So you don't blame them? You don't blame them for doing it? I mean, are they really in the business of giving milestones to other teams' players? I, I don't think that's their main goal when they okay. uh, start a game. So I, think- I, I don't care too much. I think every at bat the rest of the season, he should be intentionally walked. I don't think they should be given a chance <laughs> to have a hit at I all, mean, Eric, but that's just me. That would be fun. I think there's some, like, 100 years ago, a team did that to a rival in the last series so that their guy could win a batting title or something like that. Oh, so that's precedent for it, but yeah. not for, you know, six and a half months or whatever, five and a half months. I'll have to break out the uh, history book for that one, dude. Let's talk about uh, the bargain bin tonight. Let's get some value plays from you guys in DFS on tonight's slate. Looks like here we've got... 13 of them on the main slate. Uh, Steven, start me out. Value pitcher, who are you looking at? Yeah, it's not a lot of not a lot of options I'm excited <laughs> about. Especially when I'm going to be rolling with Reed Detmers, who I really don't want to use too much. Like, I'd love to use Trevor Rogers, but the Braves hit the lefty as well. So that, that's out of the question. I'd love to use Chris Flexen, but the Royals just simply don't strike out. They've been one of the toughest teams to strike out, dating even back to last year. So I guess that means I'm going to be going with Reed Detmers. Now, to his advantage, the O's are a team that have, and I'm talking about the Orioles, are a team that strike out a ton, okay? Thus far, 30.7% K rate. Uh, that's with 192 plate appearances uh, against lefties. He's had two start uh, tough starts already to begin the season against two teams that really don't strike out. That's the Rangers and the Astros. So I can't fault him for not exactly racking up the strikeouts to begin. But if things play out as they should against this Orioles team, he could absolutely be viewed as a really solid value play tonight on a slate that, quite frankly, at least when it comes to pitching, does not have a lot of value to give. Okay, so how tough a decision was this for you, Eric? Uh, actually, a pretty easy one because there's one guy I like way near the bottom, and that's Glenn Otto at 5,800. I actually really liked his numbers last year, and I'm saying that despite his uh, 926 ERA and six starts. All the underlying numbers point to a pretty respectable performance. Uh, His strikeout rate, walk rate, and ground ball rate were all at least a percentage point and a half better than league average. So he's above average across the board. Only seven other starters, uh, or seven total starters, I believe, in at least as many starts can say that. And it's a list that includes guys like Logan Webb, uh, Pablo Lopez, Clayton Kershaw. So being solid across the board like that, suggest that you should do a whole lot better than a 926 ERA. I'm not saying he's about to become Clayton Kershaw, but the building blocks of at least a respectable season were there in his very poor uh, sample last season. And he gets to face Oakland in the Coliseum, one of the best pitchers parks. This is an Oakland team that's been using Christian Betancourt as their first baseman slash DH on a regular basis. He's like a bad offensive catcher, career 563 OPS maybe most famous for trying to become a two-way player. He went to Korea, was a below-average hitter over there, and he's hitting often like fifth while playing first base or DH. So aren't many easier matchups than this one. I think it's going to be a good season debut here for Otto. Eric, the people watching around the world right now are like, but dude, I need to find some value in the infielder department. You would say who? Yeah, the people around the world that I'm sure are watching us from Korea, I'm going to give them one of – the former KBO stars, and that's Darren yes. Ruff at 2,400. Um, he's had a very bad start to this season. Got to admit that 13 games has got an OPS under 500. But I can't care too much about 13 games compared to what he's done across his career, uh, which is absolutely mash lefties. He's struggled against righties. That's why he had to go overseas uh, in search of regular work. He has a 685 career OPS against them. But against Southpaws, 927. 
and he should hit a second. He should hit second or third. I believe he's hit third against righties and second against the two lefties the Giants have faced this season. And the lefty they get here is Patrick Corbin, uh, 750 ERA through three starts, not striking out guys, walking too many. It's it's the sad late career of Patrick Corbin that we're used to. So I love any time we get rough against a weaker lefty, and that's certainly what we're getting here. Steve, can you find me an infielder with some value? Yeah, you know, I actually had rough as well. And the Whoa. big reason was for everything that Eric just said. He, he, he really divulged into this so eloquently that I don't have much to add. But I will add this. I think we need to give a round of applause to Patrick Corbett has not allowed a single home run so far this season. That is an accomplishment that we did not see coming. I think it's very, very, I think he should put that on his mantle. Did not give up a home run through the first two starts. That is an accomplishment that nobody ever expected. But let me tell you something. Tonight, the streak ends. Darren Ruff's going to hit nine home runs off of Patrick Corbin tonight. No one even thinks that's possible, but he's going to hit them so far. They're going to count them as two apiece. That comes to eight. So, you know, math is, is not my strong point, but Darren Ruff, 2,400. I know the math on that one. That's a good value play. Steve, we're in the bargain bin here. I need you to stick your arm real deep inside this barrel of bargains and find me an outfielder. I, I must say, the camera work today has been great. So whoever's using the it's gimbal Samir. is doing a great job. It is Samir. It, he's, he's uh, yeah, he's doing a great job. I, th I thought you looked a little tall. Marcel Ozuna <laughs> at 3K tonight is just laughable. 3K for Ozuna? Why? What, what is going on with the DraftKings algorithm that they're posting all these Braves players to be so cheap? But I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to take these players. I mean, you really can't take his 2021 numbers into consideration. He missed most of the year for reasons that I do not endorse at all. But you look at 2020, okay? Against lefties, a 527 Woba. Okay, that's really good. A 511 isolated power. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you look at his career numbers against lefties, 361 over 218 isolated power and a 129 WRC plus. Those are all great numbers. So the matchup tonight against, you know, Rogers, who I would like to use, but the Braves hit lefties really well. So I think Ozuna at 3k is a joke and I'll absolutely take that. Okay. Eric, are you looking at a value play and saying that's a joke? I'm taking that. Yeah. There's another guy at basically the same tier who has a lot of his 2021 struggles baked into his dollar value, and that's Cody Bellinger at 3,100. I and mean, I get why. He was absolutely awful in pretty much every way last season. But he's bouncing back this year. And through 12 games, hitting 279, 354, 535. Uh, there's a lot to like in his underlying numbers too, except for the strikeout rate, which is actually up over 31%. But what was happening to him a lot last year is that he wasn't hitting the ball nearly as hard and he was hitting it into the air way too much. Uh, his launch angle soared up to 22.2 degrees while his hard hit rate cratered to 34.4%. So when you hit the ball in the air and not very hard, you get a lot of weak flyouts. This year, that hard hit rate is up 12 points and his launch angle is down about seven degrees into a much more normal range. So now he's making hard contact uh, the kind of contact you want and not just warning track flyouts. He'll get the platoon advantage here against Nick Martinez, who is a nice story coming back from Japan. Looks like he is a legitimate back end major league starter, which is cool, but isn't somebody we should be at all scared about running hitters against the daily fantasy. So I like Bellinger a lot at this price. I'm not sure we'll get him at this price for too much longer. If he keeps uh, hitting like he's been hitting so far. All right, before you two uh, take off, let's go over to the DK Sportsbook. Steve, hook me up with an underdog on tonight's slate that you like. You get the first place Guardians. You get some plus money on them. They're visiting the Yankees in the Bronx. Yeah, don't give me any suggestions. I already have my bet ready. Now, if I, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. If you had to guess which team in the league had the highest batting average as it stands right now, who do you think it would be? I would go with the Guardians. If that is incorrect. It is actually the Colorado Rockies. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know how. But that's how it stands right now. The numbers don't lie. They rank sixth in runs scored in the league right now as well. Now, I don't really put a lot of stock in the batting average, but I think that is something that should be, you know, given out and, and be impressive. So the Rockies tonight against the Tigers and Tariq Skubal, who loves to give up home runs. 36 
last year. That was absolutely insane, the amount of home runs that he's given up. So with that reason alone, he's given up a ton of hard contact already, over 45%. I think there's a couple things you can do here. You can take the Rockies over three and a half runs. I feel like that's a little bit too low for the way that this team is hitting. And then you can also take them, I don't mind a sprinkle on the money line as well to win this game. The Tigers' bullpen, as you'd expect, has not been good thus far. And if the Rockies just continue to hit, then you're getting some pretty good value here on the Rockies tonight as underdogs on the road in Detroit. Are you going to see Cabrera's 3,000th hit tonight? Uh, they're going to walk him five times. Okay. I support that. Uh, Eric, what do you got? You got an underdog for tonight? Yeah, there's a really interesting one that kind of tests your philosophy on how much do you care about the first couple weeks of the season, and that's Marlins plus 125 over Atlanta. If you gave me that line and the starting pitchers, Trevor Rogers and Kyle Wright, late last season – I think everybody in the world would be all over that. I think we'd expect to see maybe minus 125 on behalf of the Marlins. I can see why the line's where it is, uh, given the way the two pitchers have started their seasons. Rodgers has been terrible, 12-15 ERA. Uh, Phillies absolutely crushed him in his last outing. There were even suspicions maybe he was tipping pitches. It was that bad. Six strikeouts against five walks. There's not much to like there either, but at least his velocity is the same as last season, so I don't think there's a worry that his underlying skill set has significantly changed or that he's dealing with some sort of unreported injury and he was absolutely dominant last season 264 era 28 and a half percent strikeout rate uh, kyle wright on the other hand has been dominant through two starts this year 164 era 15 strikeouts against one walk maybe he's just for real and we're supposed to just buy in fully after two starts but man he was nowhere close to this over the last few years in 70 innings a 656 era uh, strikeout rate about 18%, walk rate just shy of 15%. So if you build in enough of the previous versions of these guys, I think the Marlins look like potentially favorites, even despite the fact that Atlanta has a better lineup. So I, I, again, I get why, based on the respective starts for these two pitchers, why the line is flipped from what it would be last year. But that might just be an overreaction, I think, to what is ultimately a very small sample, even though it's all we have to go on so far this season. 